Now let's talk about the number of x-intercepts that a polynomial function can have. And this is very simple. It just basically depends on whether the degree of the function or the polynomial function is even or whether the degree is odd. Now, whether the degree is even or odd, the maximum number of x-intercepts, let's start with the maximum, is always equal to the degree or n. So for example, a function like let's say x cubed plus 3x minus 4, the maximum number of x-intercepts that this function can have is 3, its degree. All right, now the minimum number of x-intercepts depends on whether it's even or odd. So if you think about it, an even function always has n behavior that ends or begins in quadrant 3 and ends in quadrant 4 or begins in quadrant 2 and ends in quadrant 1. So you can have, for example, a parabola, which is an even degree, that has no x-intercepts, so something like that. So it's very possible for an even function to have zero x-intercepts. It doesn't necessarily have to have an x-intercept. Now, an odd function though, because it always has opposite n behavior, so if it's odd and has a leading coefficient that's positive, it's going to begin in quadrant 3 and end in quadrant 1. We know that at some point it's going to have to cross the x-axis at least once. Same thing if the leading coefficient is negative. The end behavior starts in quadrant 2 and then ends in quadrant 4. So we know at some point it's going to have to cross the x-axis at least once. So the minimum number of x-intercepts for an odd function or a degree uh, or a function that has an odd degree is always 1. So that's it, that's the relation. The maximum number of x-intercepts, no matter what the polynomial function is, is always equal to n, its degree. The minimum number of x-intercepts, if it's even, it could have zero x-intercepts. If it's odd, it, could have, it has to have at least one.